easy in these moments now I'm having success in Hollywood. But there's, there's years and years and years and years and years of time when things weren't successful, didn't work out. Nobody said, my phone is blowing up every day. You know, there right. have been many projects that I've done that's been crickets. I had to make sure that the phone was still working. <laughs> and now, right. the phone is blowing up. Hey Dylan, how are you? Okay, how you doing? I'm okay, you know, just hanging in there. How are you holding up during this quarantine and everything COVID-19? I consider myself very lucky because these stories every day are pretty devastating. And, um, and you know, I've been using this time to, to really kind of deepen my relationship with my daughters, which has been great. So that's, mm. been, that's been absolutely stunning. Dylan, what, I, I heard that you are working on a memoir which is except very exciting. I'm so curious what you're gonna share with us. Let me tell you something. Um, first of all, I think it's something that everyone should do uh, to go mm. back in time and sort of relive your life. But this is really, you know, I had a crazy childhood and, to, and, and it's from a child's perspective and those are always the movies that I like or the books I like. I really put myself um, as a five-year-old boy and, and maybe even younger and sort of travel through my life from that perspective and um, man, it's been so therapeutic. I think it's transformational, I really do. To, 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 I've tried to write this as a play, as a movie, but something about first person right. changes the game. Because then all of a sudden you're clicking into your unconscious in a way, mm -hmm. at least I have. And it's been mesmerizing for me. I'm sure there's things that you remember that you're just like, wow, you forgot about that completely. And do we get to hear about those moments, those experiences? Yeah, and you know, what is memory? Memory is a funny thing, isn't it? What you remember, right. not what I remember. Like you have, you know, they have these relationships in life. People are together 30 years. Yeah. And they tell completely different stories about <laughs> yes. each other. And you're like, what? You were there yeah. for 30 years and you're not telling the same story? So right. I find that really fascinating, you know, especially in relationships. Um, you know, we're, we're living different lives at the same time. So, right. you know, this is my memoir. This is my recollection of things. And I, I think that's um, maybe might be different for someone else. But for me, this is this is how I felt um, right. as a child. So I'm, I'm loving it. Right, right, for sure. Now, because you're originally from Connecticut, right? I was born in Waterbury, Connecticut, and my dad was in Manhattan. Um, so I would kind of travel be between my grandmother and my dad um, in, in Manhattan, in Greenwich Village, in the 60s, 70s, and there was really, a, a New York was a completely different place. Wow. Yeah? I mean, wow. <laughs> Crazy. No rules. Picture Manhattan with no rules. Yeah. It was insane. What inspired you to become an actor? I was 15 years old and I was coming to see my dad and um, he said that he wanted me to meet someone. And I was great. I said, like, great. So we went to go meet her and she was like the most fascinating person I ever met in my entire life. And we just forged this relationship when I was 15 and she was 22 and she was a playwright and her name was Eve Ensler mm. and she wrote the vagina monologues. That's right. Eventually. Yep. But she was and is to this day, I just got off the phone with her as a matter of fact, she is my mentor and she wow. said to me, you're going to be an actor because we were just talking about Hollywood today. She goes, you know, it's been all these years from 15 years old when I told you to go to acting school to now. And now she said, you finally have arrived as an actor. Wow. It's taken that long, by the way. It's taken that long. <laughs> and that's what she It my, takes so much work though. My, my acting teacher says it takes 20 years to become a great actor. But now Damn. I think, I really believe it's 30. She <laughs> <Jeez, laughs> it just keeps going up. But, but you anyway, know what? it was her. I, She's the one yeah. who inspired me to be an actor. She said, you're going to be an actor. She saw something in me that I never saw in myself. And I give her all the credit because I don't think I would have if not for her. That's so beautiful. And that's amazing that your dad, you know, that your dad knew to do that. 
right? That just shows the connection of parents and their kids. Had you never had that meeting, who knows what would have happened? It, that's what we talk about all the time, you know. You, people come into your lives, they, they, give, they, they send you a message, they deliver you something. Yes. And whether you listen to it, whether you hear it, whether you take it, whether you do anything with it, is up to you. But sometimes, yep. and sometimes they'll come back, sometimes another person will give you a message. But, you know, Eve was definitely one of those people in my life that, that's, that came here for a reason for me. And I listened. Number one, the right. difference is I could give you a message all day long and you won't listen and you won't do anything with it. But me, I, I heard it, I took it, and I ran with it. What would you say has been the hardest part of your journey? You know, being in Hollywood, you know, it could be tough. You always have to have this self-confidence, you know, because we're all, mm. we all have self-doubt. We all doubt ourselves. We all think, can I do it? Can I show up? Will I be any good? I think right. that that's always something. And then you have, we all have the down years. We all have time when things are not going as well as we had hoped. What do you do right. in those moments? You know, it's easy in these moments now, I'm having success in Hollywood. But there's, there's years and years and years and years and years of time when things weren't successful, didn't work out. Nobody said, my phone is blowing up every day. You know, there have right. been many projects that I've done that's been crickets. I had to make sure that the phone was still working. <laughs> and now, right. the phone is blowing up. And, you know, it's like every once in a while, if you're lucky, you know, you get to have success in this life. Yeah. And, you know, that's really now is one of those moments that I'm really, I'm so thrilled because once in a while, a character will come along that you fall in love with. Right. Ernie was one of those characters. This is Hollywood, kid. It's what people want. I would leave for the day and they say, okay, you're wrapped. And I would sit in my trailer and I was like, I don't want to leave. I still want to be Ernie. Yeah, what, what is it about Ernie in Hollywood that you love playing him so much? He has an optimism about him that I love. He taught me, by the way. You know, sometimes when you play these characters, they teach you different things. And for me, he taught me about optimism. He's, there's a man who's not well. This is a man who's got a lot of obstacles in his life, a lot of heartbreak in his life. But seemingly, he's always optimistic. And I was like, wow, that's something I'm gonna take from this guy. I like that. I like the, the sunny side of the street mentality. You know, because I was kind of maybe a little bit on the, on, on the, uh, going on the other side of the street. And I felt like, you know what? I like this about him. I'm gonna, I'm gonna implement that into my life. And you've worked with Ryan Murphy for, what, 10 plus years now at this point. So I feel like obviously there's some type of chemistry between you two. What is it about his projects that keep calling you in? I was born an artist. Ryan's an artist. And, you know, artists find each other in this life. We just have a, a shorthand with each other, you know, like in American Horror Story. We just, we did that project and I knew that was gonna be successful. I was like, man, this show is gonna, this is gonna be something special and it was. And he trusts me, you know, I'm the, I'm, I feel like I'm that, the guy who comes off the bench. And I, you know, I, I get my points, I get my block shots. Yeah. You know, I go back on the yeah. bench. You know what I mean? I'm that guy you can trust, you know? Yep. I'm, I'm, I'm Charles Oakley. Yeah, you get it done. <laughs> yes, with the Charles Oakley reference. You get it done. Yes. yes. <laughs> Throwing it back. So great. Throwing it back to the Knicks. Yeah. <laughs> I, lo I love that. What is something that you've learned about Ryan over the years that, you know, you think would be beneficial for us to learn about him because you know him on a different level and we only know what we know from the screen and obviously just interviews but is there something about him that you really admire that most people don't know when i was a kid in new york i would see andy warhol walking around and you know i was obviously fascinated by andy and his art and who he was and you know i always saw i was always too intimidated to approach but i would watch him from a distance and i um I think with Ryan, he is the Andy Warhol of our time. Mm. And he understands pop culture and he um, he's able to transfer what he sees onto the screen. And that's a really difficult thing to take this right. and put it up there. And he's able to do that. And that's why he's who he is. I mean, there's, there's so right. few people who can do that. And that's why he's celebrated. And I like being a part of that, that stable 
of actors that he uses to implement his vision of the world. It's like you said, it's just artists find a way to come together and continue to create together. Yeah, there's a story to be told, right? We all have a story. All, each of us in this life have a, has a story to be told. That's what brings us together. It's not, it's not individual. It's like we're all trying to, to tell this story of what it's like to be alive. Right. What it's like to be here for the moment that we're here. What did I do with this time here? You know, right. what did, did I change anything? Did I do anything? What's my legacy? Deep, deep, deep <laughs> questions. Is, I want to talk about deep stoop. <laughs> very deep. I want to talk about Hollywood a little bit more. It's on Netflix. And, you know, when you're looking at the storyline of it, you know, because at first you're like, oh, it's about Hollywood. You know, it's set in the late 40s. And, you know, this time is considered the golden era of Hollywood. Correct. That's kind of the energy we're feeling from it. And then we're also seeing, you know, social issues and how that would play out if things were different. So if you can just explain a little bit more why this storyline is so important. Well, you know, ultimately it's about equality, right? The story is a revisionist tale uh, in many ways about if, if we were all equal, you know, people of color, gays, women, if we were all on an equal playing field, what would that look like? And, and I think that we're getting closer to it. We're not there yet, but I think right. what Ryan's trying to do is, you know, put it out there and say, this right. is possible. And that's the revisionist tale, because obviously it wasn't like that back then. Right. Um, so that's the beautiful part of the show. I think that's the part of the show that, that people are really, you know, tuning into. And then there's the glamour part of Hollywood. You know, right. what it all looks like. It's all, everyone looks so beautiful and the clothes are so chic and there's an elegance. And then right. on top of that, there's the underbelly of Hollywood, you know? Right. So, you know, I, I always say that the, the metaphor for Hollywood is the palm tree because the palm tree is so, so magnificent, so beautiful, but the rats live at the top of the palm trees. Damn. Oh, that just made it real ugly, real fast, <laughs> like that. Some of my customers don't just come here for gas. They have uh, fantasies and desires. And for them, it ain't enough to watch a fantasy up on the big screen. They want it for themselves, and I provide that for them. In a way, I'm no different than Louis B. Mayer. You know what I mean? No, Ernie, I have no idea what you mean. Well, you see, some of them say a secret code word. You get in the car with them, have a drink maybe, and sometimes... Sometimes you have to service them. <laughs> when you were getting ready to play Ernie, were there any issues that, you know, Ryan Murphy gets to, I guess, dissect in Hollywood that you learned more about and you were just stunned? And you were just like, wow, I didn't realize that was going on back then. I mean, a lot of it's still going on today, but was there anything that stood out to you? I didn't know about the gas station. I didn't know about those, uh, the parties. I didn't know about the drug use, like, you know, the cocaine, right. that cocaine was actually around back then. Cause there was a couple of yeah. where I was, I don't even know if it's in, I think maybe it's in, I, I think I'm snorting coke with um, Tula Bankhead. I, I imagine that's what was happening back then. I mean, it was the golden era. People seem to have a, seemingly had a better time back then. <laughs> right, right. That's, that's pretty amazing. And Dylan, I, Really appreciate you taking the time to talk to us, especially during this time where it can be exhausting and fatigue, but you have such a great spirit and I'm just excited for everything that you got going on. Everything that you're gonna be a part of is gonna be amazing. Thank you. So nice talking to you. Of course. To you stay safe. Yeah, thank you so much. You too. Okay, so if you enjoyed this video, show us some love by liking it, commenting, and subscribing so that you never miss out on the latest celebrity interview.